You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. We have officially got a new player in the Seattle homeless or unhoused theater. His name is Lawnmower Man. Ballard residents feud with homeless lawnmower man over noise and sidewalk access. That's what we're talking about today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies and I read the news. Some would say from that perspective, and it might even be reasonable. A lot of people are looking for news from any other perspective than mainstream media because you just can't trust what you read. So I do it for you. I give you my perspective. Do with that is what you want. Some residents who live in the northwest part of Seattle's Boward neighborhood have been engaged in a tense standoff recently with Charles Woodward, also known as AKA Lawnmower Man, in a dispute that neighbors are threatening to take to court. I watched the video on this, so you don't have to. The neighbors are going to take Lawnmower Man, whose real name is Charles Woodward, they're going to take him to court and get a no contact order. Interesting. How has he threatened you? Oh, he screams at us every single time we go by. And he's got lawnmowers on the sidewalk. All right. Anything else? He's got like three vans and he's got two sheds all on a public street, just on the sidewalk. Can't really use the sidewalk because his 19 lawnmowers or how many or many it is. We're going to find out here really soon. This is important stuff. You need to know these facts. This is critical stuff to your well-being. How many lawnmowers does Lawnmower Man have? Oh. The two sides are at odds because Woodward has lined up nearly two dozen, almost 24 lawnmowers at the corner of 8th Avenue Northwest and 49th, Northwest 49th Street, impeding access and the sidewalk for pedestrians. He also has three parked cars, two wooden sheds, and a partridge in a pear freaking tree. I mean, this guy's just, he's just, he's loaded up the, the public street with just a bunch of stuff. Okay. It was funny in one of the videos I was watching on this, this exact story, the neighbor who had a Seahawks hat, he seemed like a pretty, pretty reasonable guy and pretty forgiving. And he's getting frustrated. He's like, there's only so much compassion you can have. You know what I mean? And then you get pissed off. You're like, I would like to be able to walk on said sidewalk because that's what it's for. So I don't have to walk out in the street. Even he, he was saying, he made the comment of uh, do nothing Durkin, <laughs> meaning our mayor. And I was like, that's, that's a funny one. Do nothing Durkin. Haven't heard that one. Probably should have, but I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to nicknames. But lawnmower man, that's, this, is a, this is a serious issue. Woodward has staked out the corner and is known to blast music from his corner or produce a loud mechanical grating noise. I would say that's maybe a grinder, something along those lines. All of his stuff is probably already sharp, but maybe he's got a grinder going that he's running on a generator and he is grinding said lawnmower blades. I don't know. That would be a theory, right? Doesn't that make sense? When asked by area residents to turn down the music or tone down the noise, they are met with exp expletive laden tirades from Woodward, they say. I watched one of these uh, tirades, just a, you know, just a small little clip of his on uh, Como News, and they had to bleep out a good portion of what he was saying, because I believe there were some F-bombs in there and probably not family-friendly content. That's, that was my consideration there. And we need to keep this, we need to keep this on the, you know, you got to be reasonable. Who gives an expletive, he said to Como News. I'm allowed to make noise at night, just like they are. And he's talking about the double-decker bus with the homeless recording studio up top. I mean, they've got a recording studio going on there. They've got a set of drums. I was reading a Reddit thread the other day, so you don't have to. And what they were playing on one video was Rocket Queen by Guns N' Roses. Now, that is an exceptional song. And that intro... Intro to that song on their first album, Appetite for Destruction. That's the, if you haven't heard Rocket Queen, you need to. 
It, unless you're just not a hard rock fan and then don't even bother. You're going to hate it. Let's be honest. Most people are going to hate it. And that is why the Jokers on the double decker bus are playing the intro on the drums to Rocket Queen in the middle of an urban environment where there are other people trying to sleep at night. Kids trying to sleep at night. Families trying to do what you do at night, which is take the tension down from the day to a point where you can get a good night's sleep. Rocket Queen from Guns N' Roses probably played badly by a musician who is trying to record it on an altered second floor of an illegally parked RV. Do you get where I'm going here? Yeah. That's why that storyline falls right in, in line with this one, which is Lawnmower Man. Lawnmower Man is saying, I'm allowed to make noise at night just like they are. And he's talking about, you know, the double decker bus that's got a recording studio on the second floor that may or may not fall over onto said traffic and or people walking by on the sidewalk. All of this stuff literally happening in the streets of Seattle, out in the open. And that's why you've got neighbors saying, hey, do nothing. Durkin is pretty much doing nothing. Interesting. Kelly Davidson said his loud music, we're back to Lawnmower Man, grinding metal sounds and the annoying hum of a generator goes on at all hours of the day and keeps her awake at night. At the beginning of the pandemic, I did a podcast on Karki Park in Seattle, which is kind of more North Seattle, very nice residential area. Um, and I talked about earlier in my career, I did some appraisal work in the Karki Park. And I remember there was a flood zone area and I'm like, oh, that's because of the creek. And it's just all this wetland and really, really nice. And you've got parks around, you've got these residential neighborhoods and Homes that, you know, get close to the, the, the creek, they're of more desired, they're more desired, they've got more value, because people want to be by a park. But during the beginning of the, the coronavirus, as these homeless encampments were exploding, because they realized nobody's going to shut us down for as long as this pandemic goes, we can do whatever we want. Somebody had set up a metal shop just outside of Carkeek Park crazy stuff. And you're like, okay, so they've got that going on there. And at that point in time, at the beginning of the pandemic, I didn't realize how many of these stories were going on in Seattle. Just nutty stuff in public, in public parks, public streets, public sidewalks. I mean, it's just, it's a thing. It's just kind of what we're doing in Seattle. Then you've got politicians who are like, well, you know, um, yeah, we don't condone that action. And we're looking into doing something and it's on the priority list of stuff we're thinking about, talking about, you know, it just never goes anywhere, right? So the uh, neighbor is saying, he doesn't seem to care, she said. In fact, he has threatened my neighbors. This guy just isn't all right in the head. He's just not. I mean, you look at him and you go, okay, he needs some help. And he does. Most of these folks do. Sean Telford also lives nearby and says that he has reached out to the city every agent to to every city agency for help, including Seattle City Councilman Dan Strauss, who represents the area, and Mayor Jenny Durkin. He said no one at City Hall will address the situation. They're just not doing anything. That's just how we handle it in Seattle. Ah, it's okay. You, you know, lawnmower man. He should have his own t-shirt line, right? Lawnmower man, Seattle. Line up those lawnmowers on the sidewalk. We're kind of stuck right now in this situation, Telford said. The Hope team says that there's nothing that they can do if Charles doesn't want services and they can't force him to take it. That's the crux of the situation. You've got somebody who needs some help. They're living on the streets. City isn't getting in the help that they need. Residents are being impacted by it. It's just a mess. Just uh, It's just this ongoing train wreck. We're kind of stuck right now. Um, so so every, what I find interesting in this one is everybody knows this guy's name. Ah, oh, that's Charles, the lawnmower man. The ongoing conflict has raised the ire of residents. Understandably so. Understandably so. I mean, this is going on. And this is in a residential neighborhood. And this guy is basically 
Okay. He's not following the law at all. And we're not even really touching on the fact that there's a 72 hour law in Seattle that has recently been reactivated during the whole coronavirus thing. You had an issue where the CDC said, don't move anybody anywhere because you could spread the Rona. And at that point in time, we didn't really know what was going on. So everybody just kind of hunkered down and did what they were told. This allowed folks that are living in RVs to basically just hunker down and make their encampments larger and larger with more stuff because that's apparently what you do when you look at you know the, some of these encampments. They've just got all kinds of stuff. The more majority of it looks like junk to me, but to them, for some reason – it's got some value. I don't really get it. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And so I think it was a couple of months ago, and, and, and I talked about this here, the fact that there is now a 72 hour rule. And in this storyline, uh, Como went by and showed little notices being put on to people's vehicles saying, hey, you might want to move this. It's not like the city's going to tow all of these vehicles, because it would amount to probably the 1000s. If not, I mean, somewhere in the, I don't know, it's a lot. You just drive around and you see all these RVs and you're like, there's a lot of RVs out here. And it's a lot of different parts of Seattle. But this guy um, has at least a couple of vehicles. Lawnmower man, Charles, has a couple of vehicles and he's living there illegally on a street. Just, I mean, if you tried to do that in other segments of society, you'd just be shot down. Like if I tried to do something weird or crazy, You just be shy. Oh, you can't do that. Uh, No, you can't do You're going to get a fine. But the way we handle the whole homeless thing, it's just like anything goes. Just let her rip. We'll see how this goes. He's got a grinder and he's loud shrieking metal sounds. Mm, You know, that happens on the sidewalk sometimes when you've got a collection of almost two dozen lawnmowers. The selective enforcement of our rules around here is really wearing down on the compassion we have for this issue, Telford said. I thought that was probably the most well-spoken line of, of, of this story. The selective enforcement of our rules, meaning, well, we enforce some, but not most of these ones. Selective enforcement of rules around here is really wearing down on the compassion. Neighbors have had it. They've had it. So compassion. Our compassion is at an all-time low. We had an ebb and flow of compassion for those who are unhoused for a while, but that ebb and flow has turned into, mm, yeah, not so much anymore. Not so much anymore because their their patience is just, it's not run thin. They're out. So what's going to happen? Well, that's part of the reason Seattle Got a new mayor in town. There's a new mayor in town. He says he's going to do something about this situation. He says that the homeless, the unhoused, are going to be offered services. They're going to be offered housing. And if they don't accept it, there will be consequences. What those consequences look like, that's what's going to be the interesting thing. Because Seattle, for the most part, has been very, uh, what they want to call, compassionate, And to me, that just means tolerant. And it also means you are enabling behavior that shouldn't be happening. Period. But nobody wants to say that because that means you got to drop the bomb or you got to drop the hammer on some folks that, you know, are kind of defenseless. They're crazy. They're addicted to drugs. They're doing whatever. They're not working off a full deck of cards. The rest of us can see that. We can look in from the outside and go, all right, there's a reason you're living in a tent in the middle of winter in Seattle, and it's you don't want to abide by the rules, and you got a whole bunch of stuff going on, none of which you're going to solve on your own. But Seattle just allows them to live like this. And Seattle isn't the only town. Portland, another great nearby example. Take a look at any of the footage on YouTube of Skid Row down in LA. I mean, you got some pretty excellent examples of what progressive policies do to certain areas of a city. I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's not very progressive. Mm, Yeah. Durkin did not respond to requests by Como News for comment. What? Do nothing Durkin? Got no words? Hmm. Strauss said the, Strauss is the city council member for this district. Strauss said the city's vehicle outreach team, 
those are the ones that go out and enforce the 72 hours and they talk with, you know, with people. And I think they work with um, doing pump outs and things like that. Cause otherwise you've got, you know, you've got uh, sewer systems on these vehicles that are not being pumped out the way they should. And it just, it just gets ugly. The whole thing is ugly. Strauss said the city's vehicle outreach team is almost out daily in Ballard trying to help people who live in RVs and cars, but there has been no immediate solution for the neighbors dealing with Woodward, who told us he has rejected the city's offers for housing and services. It's like an addict. You can't make them go into rehab. You can't make them get treatment. Unless they break the law, then you can put them in jail. That is literally kind of one of those last resorts. And I have been at that point um, with the situation in my immediate family. Well, do you let them go to jail? Maybe that's the right call. That's where you kind of get on that really thin line of enabling versus maybe letting something bad happen to that person. They go to jail and then they figure it out because you can't make people do this stuff. Just the law doesn't allow it. It's just not how we're set up. When in fact, we used to be, and you had a lot less people running around the streets, but then you had people in mental institutions that sometimes shouldn't be there, you know, that whole thing. But for the most part, there are these folks that are not within their mental capacities. They should not be living on the streets. That's not where they need to be. That's a, that's, that's not right either. I and mean, that's just, that's just wrong in my opinion. What with all the crazy people, what do you think? I am stupid to take that, he said. This is what Lawnmower Man said. If you're offered housing, will you take it? What with all the crazy people, you think I'm going to take that offer? Hell no. That's what he's saying. He's got a point, right? All those people are crazy. Never mind the fact I've got a couple of dozen lawnmowers on the sidewalk and just a bunch of stuff and I scream at people as they go by and not a very good neighbor, but you know, got to be tolerant. Como News has also tried to get answers from the Seattle Department of Transportation, which is supposed to be enforcing the 72-hour parking rule on vehicles that sit idle on the street. Okay, that's going nowhere. There were some stickers on RVs urging their owners to move, including the to notorious double-decker RV that has been parked in the same spot for weeks in Ballard, despite fears that its makeshift top section will topple over. That is the homeless recording studio right there. I mean, Seattle, what happened? How, how do we get Lawnmower Man and homeless recording studio just as normal things within our daily lives? All of a sudden, yeah, that's okay. That's homeless man with lawnmower collection and sheds, three RVs and that partridge in a pear tree. So, so no response from the city, no response from the mayor, no real response from in the council members. We're just kind of, you know, we're being tolerant and letting things happen as they do, as, as you do in Seattle. And shocking, none of this stuff seems to be getting any better. It's really interesting to watch this happen. Just it doesn't, it's not getting better on its own. I, I, I don't understand how that's, how that's not a thing, but because I just assumed it would just, you know, sort itself out. If you just ignore this kind of thing, it's just going to go away, right? Oh, it's not? Hmm. Hmm. Going to have to rework and rethink and reimagine that approach then. So until then, Davidson and some other neighbors are trying to file a restraining order against their homeless neighbor. Did I say no contact order earlier? I think I did. So they're trying to get a restraining order against their homeless neighbor. I would like to see that. I would like to see that argument made to a judge. All right. What's the guy done? Well, he screamed at us and he made a loud shrieking noise on his grinder powered by his generator in his RV that does not move on the sidewalk in Ballard. Hmm. We're planning to go to court. He said, the neighbor, this is just kind of another example of when you let things go, when you let things happen, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. And maybe in this case, maybe he ends up with three dozen lawnmowers in the sidewalk before we really do something. But it seems like something has to happen 
before any of these things ever get cleared out. Somebody's got to be impacted like physically or hurt or, you know, you hate to say it, but like in the case of CHOP where a couple of kids lost their lives, things like that have to happen before something ever gets done. And we know these are issues and they're important issues because these, these impact a lot of neighborhoods. This is impacting a lot of neighborhoods. Crazy, crazy. But for as long as these storylines are going on, I'm going to bring them to you right here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. That is my promise to you. But I'm all done on this one because uh, lawnmower man, he's got lawnmowers. He's not going in. He's not getting help. He's not getting housing. City doesn't seem to be doing much. What's going to happen? Well, you're going to have to tune back in here to the Seattle Real Estate Podcast and find out because as soon as I've got an update, I will bring it for you right here. All right. Thanks again for being here. Thanks again for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. You got to have some compassion for these folks. Agreed. However, you also got to draw a line when you've got a homeless dude called Lawnmower Man. That's the bottom line. Somebody's got to do something. We'll see. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. Bye for now. to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.